Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. And it is a great honor to introduce this next segment. Uh, some of you will be familiar with Tully Williams, our keynote speaker from the Nilo Company. Tully, welcome. And uh, you're bringing uh, with you uh, somebody uh, from X Time, I understand. I am so excited to have X Time back. Wow. I'm telling you, I am a believer, I am a user, I am the guy that makes it happen. So, super excited. Tiffany is going to have it. She's going to knock it out of the park today. <laughs> Tiffany, there's no better welcome than that from Tully Williams. I'd like to introduce the Fixed Ops Roundtable uh, to Tiffany from X Time. Tiffany, welcome to the event. Thanks, Ted. Thank you, Tully. Man, you set the expectation high. So hopefully we can reach it or exceed it. Um, we have a really fun topic to discuss today. So what we're going to be talking about are opportunities service departments have to get more cars through the service lane faster, and some of the processes that Tolly has implemented at his own stores um, to fill up that capacity at 136%, which is mind blowing. So um, can't wait to dig in. So let's kind of let's start it off with capacity and retaining people. Um, we all know retaining people, that's something a lot of us haven't seen in years, if ever. Uh, you know, let's first focus on the repair order side of things, and then we'll talk about the retention. So one fun fact that we came across at Cox Automotive, the repair order revenue index decreased month over month in June after 11 months of increases and remains up year over year. Meanwhile, the repair order volume index decreased both month over month and year over year. So what's that mean? While the number of appointments may be below pre-pandemic levels, when I talk to dealers, they are hitting record revenues and feel like they don't have a moment to spare. No joke, I was just on a call with the dealership yesterday. They are booked out all the way until November. It is crazy. Um, so let's talk about it. You know, We know there are a finite number of hours in the day and only so many people in your service lane to get things done and possibly fewer people than you've ever had. That makes efficiencies and optimizing shop capacity key. So, Tolly, what areas have you been focused on? Where have you found opportunities to be more efficient? Well, you know, it starts with the capacity at your store. You're spot on. How many techs do you have in your store? Times that by 10. And that's what we sell every day. And our job is to line up our appointments to our technician capacity at that day. As you said, we are busier than a one-armed paper hanger. I'm telling you, the stores are going crazy. Why? Because we are providing great service because we are in repeat and referral business. So again, starts with the number of technicians. Two, mm -hmm. are you loading your shop on your appointment schedule with the right appointments? I say you don't want 50,000 check engine lights coming in, in the driveway and you don't want to have 4 million one-tenth recalls. So you want to make sure you set up your schedule right so you can maximize your capacity in your store. Regulate how much repair, regulate recalls, and maximize maintenance. Why? Maintenance is what drives repeat referral. And what you said earlier, retention is the business that we're in. Sure is. Talking about retention, that goes hand in hand with what we like to call customer experience. So um, did you know, I didn't know this at first, that our top performing dealers, of those top performing dealers, 99% agree that improving customer experience is an important focus. It's not just about the money. It is, it truly is it rooted in the customers, the experience they have, and then they want to come back to your store. The money is going to come once that process or expectation is in place. So Tolly, do you think we can identify the tools that create the conveniences your customers want while amplifying your team's performance and efficiency? 100%. So you look at this, as we are in the repeat referral business, is it easy to do business with you? Mm -hmm. And I think it starts with this, the appointment. Is your appointment set up correctly online? And when you call into the call taker's ability to make those appointments easy, having 40,000 things online to choose from does not work. I want people to make appointments at three o'clock in the morning or at eight o'clock at night or at noon every day. We wanna have our capacity set up. That is so important because mm -hmm. if your appointments are confusing, they will bail on you. So appointments are key. Next, yeah. 
when you drive in the driveway, does the customer know who you are? When you bring out the tablet and say, Mr. Mr. Smith, I see you're here for your 30K service and the recall. You can talk to them about it at their car where they feel the most important. Next is we write the repair order and then we get our world-class technicians to do what? That great inspection with what? Pictures and most important videos of everything that they find or not find because a green inspection is the most important inspection. And then mm -hmm. when we send those quotes, we talk to the customer, would you like to be communicated with text today? Because customers don't wanna be called and pestered by the dealership. We have to make it easy to do business with us. So we asked them, how do you wanna be communicated with it? I can guarantee 90% say, please text me. And mm -hmm. guess what we can do? We can send their quote, if anything, with pictures and video to their phone and what? They use their thumb to say yes. Oh my God, what a concept. And they can pay for it online. That's how you make it easy to do business in the service drive. I'm so glad you brought those points, Tolly. And I really do. It does boil down to the customer experience, but making it the same experience for all customers. And it truly starts at ground level. And that's at your appointment process. You brought up the website. Nothing drives me more crazy than having more availability when you call into the dealership versus scheduling online. I don't know about you, but I'm wanting less calls to my advisors so my advisors can provide customers with an excellent experience. And to do that, you need to have your customers being able to schedule online and doing the same things they would be able to do if they were to call in and speak to someone and schedule. So it definitely starts there. And then we take it to step two, they arrive at the dealership. Every single customer should be greeted with a tablet. I've come into stores where they're like, oh, we'll just do it with the main shop or we'll just do it with the express link. Or maybe, you know, this advisor has been here 25 years. He doesn't like to do it. So how is that fair to the customer that ends up with that advisor who's looking around and seeing all these other customers getting checked in with this Engage iPad or they're getting to sign with their finger? You'd be shocked at how the little things truly matter to the customer. And then lastly, one thing I've noticed recently, you know, I've been I've been in stores all across the country and small towns and big cities and nothing blows my mind more when you're talking to an advisor and you ask, why didn't you text the quote? Oh, well, I've been working with this customer customer for 10, 15 years. They don't like texting. They're older. I'm here to tell you my grandma, she's 85 and she FaceTimes me more than my mother does. So I'm pretty sure they do text. And what do you have to lose? Make the experience the same for all customers. It's that simple. So you know, when you look when you look at when you look at that concept there is that it starts with with at the visit, are they asking the customer what which 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 way do you want to be represented today? Do you want us to call you? Most people say no. Can we text you today? And then what happens when we write the repair order? You verify the text as they're sitting at your desk or at the tablet. Right then you're starting that communication before, right when the RO is written. Two, you're going to have all the previous declines that you can talk about. You know, Mr. Customer, you were here last time. I noticed that your brakes were yellow. Remember, we sent those pictures to you. I can resend that for you. Or would you like us to put that on there? If the technician finds that they're needed, we can take care of that for you today. Pricing pictures from the last visit at your fingertips, making you look what? You're looking trustworthy. We're taking pictures mm -hmm. of those things. There's no question. Is that car really leaking? Are my brakes really bad? Are my tires bald or not? the video and pictures give us that credibility because we're in repeat referral business and repeat referral business means customers must trust you and do business with you easily. You are so spot on. And I'm glad you brought up the recommendation piece. You know, we're seeing that customers approve, get ready for this number, 49%, 40, almost half of their additional recommendations with the picture and video. And here's the kicker in the first 15 to 30 minutes of receiving it. Why do you want advisors wasting their time all day picking up the phone, trying to reach them, trying to reach them, leaving messages? This is so efficient, it's gonna streamline your processes and tie in a customer experience. And then to top that, dealers are seeing an 82% dollar per RO uplift with recommendations that have a video attached. Correct. That is crazy. <laughs> and think about this, let's tie it back to the hours, right? So. Customers want to say yes with their thumb, but yet does a technician want to push that car off or drive that car off and bring it back in? No, they don't. No. So what's going to happen is two things are going to happen. One, customers are going to be happier because 
They see pictures and video and they say yes with their thumb. The parts department gets the notification. They pull the part. The tech gets notification. Oh, my God, they sold it. <laughs> Boom, gets on that job right away. What happens? see in the shop. Techs go home tired and rich. That's <laughs> tired and rich. That's how it makes it happen. Yeah. Absolutely. These are such good points. Um, you know, one thing that we didn't touch on that I do think we're, we're still seeing, um, so we're switching, I just want to switch gears a little bit, kind of get your insight, Tolly, inventory shortage. I feel like I say those two words and GMs, dealer principals just quiver. Um, you know, we cannot overlook services role in acquiring inventory. The piece of advice I think every dealer should know that is listening to this, ask your customers if they're interested in a free appraisal during their online scheduling process. I've seen this work in several dealer groups. We started this, man, at the peak of um, the shortage. What, it was about a year and a half now? Almost two years ago, which is mind-blowing. Add it as an option. Why? Because the customer is selecting it. So in their mind, it was their idea. And then root it out of a base of convenience. Hey, you're already coming in for service. Let us do a free appraisal while your vehicle's in the shop for your convenience. You know, we've got to be creative on ways that we're acquiring inventory. So, um, Tolly, I'd love to hear, you know, how is your service drive combating the inventory shortage in your companies? Great question. So we also buy in the driveway. So at the Nilo company, we have 10 rooftops. We buy over two to 300 cars a month in the service drive, right? And how we do it is this. We make sure that, one, our sales department is targeting certain cars. But here's the kicker is your service advisors on, are they in, are they ready to help you sell that car? Mm -hmm. Because when your service department is anti sell the car, it won't work. So what we had is that the service manager, the, the, the service advisors are all in about that. And how do we do that? One, we give them an incentive. Mm -hmm. We give them a dollar amount when we buy the car. Two, when the car is traded in, they get to write the recon ticket. So they're not losing anything on that car. Right. So we want to make sure that that service advisor is taken care of when we purchase that car through the driveway. And the service rider gets now two customers. One, we exactly. get the same customer because they get another car and two, potentially get a second customer because we have this unbelievable trade that we get that has been serviced at your dealership. Mm -hmm. What more can you ask for for a trade? I love that. And even, you know outside the box, outside of the client experience. I do think I'm, I, and me personally, and you're pricing at your stores, just the culture of your employees. Before service and sales, it was like West Side Story. Sales mm -hmm. came back there, it was like, get out. And I was just on site this whole summer. I was about six weeks on site and just the collaboration now we're seeing. They need each other. And you know, the working together, the culture's changing. And I just, I love that piece of it that we're all working at, as one towards a common goal. And that's an excellent customer experience. So when you talk about culture, so uh, you, you look back 10 years ago and Ted knows this for a fact, parts and service department hated each other, right? <laughs> oh my God, you're taking advantage of me. You're taking advantage of me. That is gone. Why? Because pay plans now are fixed ops. Next is how do we bring service and or fixed ops and variable together? It starts at the top. I share an office with my good friend, Dennis, over here. He's the variable director for our group. We're in the same office. I, as I'm the quiet one in the group, he doesn't listen to me very often. But the issue is, is that we are all one team and we're working for one goal is to retain customers and drive repeat and referral. And if your store doesn't believe in that, you will be not successful at all. Because then what happens is, is that the service advisors will go against the sales department. And that does not help the customer out at all. So, is your store set up for success? Is your store believe that we are one team? It starts there first, second, mm -hmm. and work on the process to buy the cars. 100%. I love all these different strategies. This conversation has been amazing. Thank you for all the great insight, Tolly. Um, to all of our listeners, we hope you've had as much fun as we have and gained some insight into what is working at Tolly's top performing dealerships. We'd love to talk to you about the technology tools that we dis discuss and help you get more cars through the service lane in less time. So what, if you want any um, information, my cell phone is down at the bottom bar. Call, text me. Also, you can book a demo at xtime.com and we will be in touch as soon as possible. Love it. And, you know, one last thing, Tiffany uh, and Tully, the X time tools make the dealership look that much more professional mm -hmm. and prepared. Right. So a great analogy you gave us of the customer, you know, with the advisor who is not using that compared to the ones who are. And um, 
you know, every guest, every single time. So love it. Uh, Tiffany from X time. Thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Uh, X time has amazing tools. Uh, mm -hmm. Telly Williams at the Nilo group uh, in Sacramento uh, is an amazing performer. And uh, Telly, thank you for everything that you shared with us today. Well, I'm super excited. Glad to see that X time is here. I tell you, I'm a believer in that product. And, uh, you know, as we said here, look at the things that can do for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? We just want to share that love with everybody else. And, Ted, thank you for everything you do for us, my good friend. Yep. Great stuff. Tully Williams and Tiffany from X-Time here today at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thanks, Ted.